Having dabbled in digital art for a long time now, I've picked up a lot of different techniques and tricks that really help me out. I view a lot of these as basically shortcuts that allow me to work faster and fix things easier and be more proficient overall. So here are my eight must-know art cheats in Photoshop or similar applications. Number one, the lasso tool. The lasso tool is incredibly useful, starting with the sketching phase that allows you to manipulate the sketch in a time-saving manner. That means you don't have to constantly erase and redraw to editing the finalized drawing slash painting. When sketching, you can spin it around, reverse it, shrink, enlarge, move the tiniest little line, or the whole sketch. There really are a lot of great freedoms you have. And what about if you've finished your painting only to realize your eyes are too wide set? Just select it, move it over a touch, and problem solved. Number two, the pen tool. Want super clean lines but can't achieve them with your tablet? Or maybe you don't even have a tablet? The pen tool is here to save the day. Way back in the day when I started messing around with doing art on the computer, I didn't have a tablet. I would scan a pencil drawing using my dad's scanner and then open it in Photoshop. Since all I had was a mouse, the pen tool seemed like such a great find. Lay out your paths and then stroke them at the thickness you want. You can also use the pen tool to select areas and fill them with color. Even to this day, these techniques have shaped how I do digital illustrations. And in fact, with the age of smartphones and people taking pictures instead of scanning their work into the computer, it might just come in very handy. Number three, Miss AG's patented duplicate clipping mask select feather fix. It's not actually patented. I use this technique a lot when painting. This goes along with the lasso and transform warp ability. If you've ever watched my Let's Paint videos, you've seen me go through this process. I duplicate the layer to work on, make that duplicate layer a clipping mask. This prevents it from being all fuzzy or opaque if there are soft edges or transparencies. Select the area you want to move or warp with the lasso. Feather the edges about 10 pixels depending on your document size to prevent hard, ugly edges showing, and simply move it around or warp it the way you want. It's that easy, super time saver, and one of my favorite techniques. Number four, layers. It might seem obvious, but layers are a big difference between digital and traditional art. You can use them from anything from adjustments, having objects that are manipulated outside of the main layer art, like this hand, I can move it however I want without it affecting the face. And as a personal favorite, you can duplicate the layer you're currently working on and then mess around with the new layer all you want without worry of ruining it. If you do ruin it, no harm. You just delete it, pretend it didn't happen. This allows for more boldness and inventiveness that you might have been a little hesitant to try with a one copy only traditional art, worried about wrecking all the hard work you've already done. You can even duplicate it multiple times, try different things out, and see which version you like best. Number five, brush slash layer modes. While it's possible to change your levels to manipulate the contrast of your work, or go into curves or hue saturation to tweak the colors, Sometimes you just want to have a little more control over exactly the part you want to change. Herein lies the beauty of the brush modes. Say for instance you want to add some brightness to one side of a face, change your brush mode to color dodge, and change a few brush settings, and bam, super easy! It can also be used to give eyes some reflective light, or give things like gems a colorful glow. Multiply is great for going in and adding shadows to a piece, if used sparingly. I also use it for things like giving people blushes in my illustrations, or drawing shadows into the eyes. An overlay is if you want to mix a few color hues into your work in very specific areas without opaquely painting over it and losing details. I also often use an overlay layer on top of my illustrations, and paintings is a style choice just to give it a little more interest in color variation. Number six, flip canvas. This is another small but very effective technique, and it's another benefit that digital art has that traditional doesn't. Although maybe you could try a mirror. Sometimes when working on a piece of art, you become blind to its mistakes after staring at them for so long. It's why when you're drawing or painting, it's good to step back and look at it from, quote, fresh eyes, or put simply, a different perspective. Often, if there's a mistake, it'll become more noticeable. While you can step back from your computer or even size your document down to get a new view of your work, simply flipping the canvas can achieve this too. You'd be surprised by how many mistakes become obvious. Number seven, actions. This one isn't so much an art hack as it is a task hack. I use this a lot to make coloring my digital illustrations super fast and easy. For example, something I do over and over again is making a selection in the lines of the illustration with the magic wand, but since I don't want any of those weird white jagged spaces between the line and the color, I expand the selection a little so the color will sit comfortably behind the lines. 
but that means I have to actually fill the color on a separate layer underneath the lines, so I have to click on that layer to select it, then I can finally fill the color I want. Doing all those menu selects really adds up time-wise, but with the actions I just have to select the section I want with the magic wand, hit the function key with my pre-programmed actions, and I am all ready to just fill that color and move on. That's just one example of the many things you can program your actions to do. Number 8. Liquify. And we have finally reached the most universally loved tool for digital artists of all kinds. The liquify filter is kind of like dark magic in the way that if used correctly it's a powerful tool to help artists, but it's also the thing used to manipulate fashion photos, something that people unfamiliar with this technique might not spot and be fooled by. But don't hold that against the liquify filter. It can really be a true friend if you let it. Have a digital painting riddled with annoying errors? Liquify can help. Want to reshape your nose in your drawing? Liquify can help. Want to change your jawline? Liquify can help. Want to make a cheek bulge out more? Or how about shrink it in some? Well, you get the idea. It really is a fast and easy way to manipulate your art, and it can accomplish so many different things. So there are my computer art tips and tricks. Got any art hacks you like to do on your computer? Let me know about them in the comments. And if you have any questions about these techniques, feel free to ask. Have a great day, take care, and I will see you in the next video.